Hey guys, let's jump right on into our buzzword for today and continuing with our look at the book of 1 John. And today we are in 1 John chapter 3 and verses 8 through 10. And as you can see, I am chained up here a little bit as an illustration of who we are outside of Christ. And if you have become a Christian, who you were before you came to Christ. But if you're watching this video now and you are not a Christian, you are not a follower of Christ, then this is an illustration of your life right now. I mean, you may feel free. You may feel like you have no uh, chains in your life. But in reality, if you're not living for God, you are chained up in your sin. And Satan wants you to stay that way. He wants you to stay chained up in your sins, living a sinful lifestyle with no care for God's righteousness, no care for anything but fulfilling your pleasures. And we're going to see today that that is an indication that you are a child of the devil. Now, let, let me ex explain this. We have been talking from uh, chapter 2, verse 29, all the way into chapter 3, verse 8, talking about being a child of God. And this passage tells us that those who practice righteousness are children of God. Now, when we talk about practicing righteousness, this is not sinless perfection. Because previously, John told us that if you say you're without sin, you are a liar. So the reality of sin has already been established. But what John is saying is that those who practice sin are those who have a lifestyle of sin. There's no change in their life, no repentance, no growth, and no desire for what's right. And when they sin, there's no conviction. That is what it means to live in sin or to practice sin. If you look at verse 10, it says, By this it is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whosoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. Remember, we said those that practice righteousness demonstrate that they are of God. So those who do not practice righteousness are not of God. So who are they of? They are of the devil. And it says, uh, nor is the one who does not love his brother. So John is going to go in more specifically in the next passage, uh, beginning in verse 11, to talk about how this uh, living in sin and not living in sin and this living in righteousness, how it looks. And he's going to use the topic of love in the next uh, section that we're going to look at. But today it says there in verse 8, Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. So when it says that you're of the devil because you are practicing sin, we need to remember that Satan rebelled against God. He was once an angel and was an archangel and was expelled from heaven because he rebelled against God. And what is a demon but simply an angel that has fallen and has rebelled against God, its creator? So if you are living a lifestyle of sin, you are demonstrating the characteristics of Satan, which means you are of him because you are demonstrating his characteristics, his behavior, and his nature in your life. Now, Jesus, when he came, he came to destroy the works of the devil. And that word destroy basically means to loosen to unbind, to remove those chains, to break those chains. So when Jesus gave his life for you on the cross, 
He broke the power of sin in your life. He broke the chain of uh, guilt. He broke the chain that bound you down away from God. He paid the punishment for your sins. And when he rose again on the third day, that demonstrated that the power of sin can be broken in the life of the believer. So if you know Christ as your Savior today, the chain of sin has been broken on your life. And you're not a child of the devil. You are a child of the living God who loves you and gave his son as a demonstration of his love for you. Continuing on in verse 9. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning. Why is that? says this, for God's seed abides in him and he cannot keep on sinning because he's been born of God. So it says that the reason why a child of God does not continue in a rebellious state of sin with no change, no conviction, no progress, no perseverance is because God's seed abides in them. Now, this is referring to the Holy Spirit. When you become a follower of Christ, it is a work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes into your life. He makes you alive. That's regeneration. He converts you to Christ, and you become a new creature in Christ. You become a child of God. So this Holy Spirit is God's nature imparted to you. Second Peter tells us his divine power is granted unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us into his own glory and excellence. Now verse four in Second Peter Second Peter one verse four. By which he has granted to us promises, precious and very great promises so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that's in the world because of sinful desires. So it says here that in Christ, we are partakers of the divine nature. The Holy Spirit lives within us. He gives us a new nature, new desires, conviction when we sin. He moves us to repentance when we fail and he guarantees that we will persevere till the end and he also teaches us to hate our sin so a characteristic of a child of God is that they don't practice sin because his spirit dwells in them and they don't want to sin against their God last verse we'll look at Today, I hope you write these things down and don't take my word for it. Go research and read these verses. So in Romans chapter 8, read the whole chapter when you got time. But this is how this passage applies to your life today. In verse 11, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So then, since you have the spirit in you and you have been raised to life with the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, that power that, that drove Jesus out of the tomb is that same power that dwells in you. So then, brothers, you are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons or daughters of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons or daughters by whom we cry, Abba, Father, the Spirit himself 
bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. My question is, who is your spiritual father? Are you born of God? Has God broke the chain on your life? Are you a new creature, a new person with a new desire and a new conviction and a new nature? Or are you chained up in your sins, living every day in your sin, not caring, no change, and demonstrating that you don't know God? Maybe you're a Christian, but maybe lately you've been just allowing this chain to wrap itself around you, weigh you down, chain you up, and whether it be anger or lust or greed or jealousy, uh, pornography, uh, alcoholism, whatever's chaining you up, if you're a child of God, you have power over it, throw it off your life, and live as a child of God. And that is your buzzword for the day. It's time for me to buzz on off. See ya.